Hello everybody, uh, this is Carl Brago. It has been way too long. Of course, I've only done one previous video. Uh, that was for this, uh, the game Second and Ten, football. And uh, I was glad to present that. It's Unfortunately, it remains the, the sole recording on YouTube featuring that game. Uh, but I did get almost 2,000 views and uh, the response has been, you know, positive. And uh, I thought I would do another one for a new game that I just came across. As you can see, it's Inside Pitch Baseball from the fine folks over at Inside Sports Games. Uh, the man who actually turned me on to this game is the uh, terrific YouTuber uh, ID Jester and also uh, DMO 1964. These two guys, uh, check them out. I will put uh, links to their channels at the bottom of this video. They have many, many uh, sports game videos available, and uh, in particular, they uh, they seem to really appreciate this particular game, a game I'd never heard of uh, until I saw these videos, and I'm somebody that's been playing uh, sports game videos for, well, if you count tabletop, going back to the 70s, but just in terms of computers, I go back to Lance Hafner, uh, Micro League. Uh, Earl Weaver Baseball, these are all games I started playing around, I guess, late 80s, early 90s. Um, and I'm a big fan of uh, many videos out there. I mean, on my uh, desktop right now, um, I have uh, uh, Action PC Baseball, uh, Out of the Park, PC Replay Baseball, which is probably my favorite, uh, APA, which is also known as Baseball for Windows, um, but this game uh, really intrigued me, and, but for some reason, for a couple of weeks, I had the, uh, the, the worst time trying to get it to load. Uh, I was getting this particular uh, runtime error, but um, I kind of worked with Bill Salm, uh, who is the computer programmer of Chris Davis's original uh, Cards and Dice uh, version of Inside Pitch, which of course came first. Uh, and uh, I've been playing it nonstop for the last couple of weeks. It is an absolute addiction. Uh, and it's the same with Inside Blitz Football, again, another game I have. I guess I'll, I may be doing a uh, video of that also. Uh, uh, but, you know, not, nothing's perfect, and uh, there is some uh, uh, downsides to Inside Pitch Baseball, which we'll get to later. Uh, but today, what I'm doing is I'm replaying a 1965 Major League season. Um, I was going to replay 1962, which is my favorite year. Uh, I'm a huge San Francisco Giants fan, and uh, I still can't believe what Bruce Bochy did in the ninth inning against the Cubs in Game 4. Uh, man, that was a real mental breakdown. Uh, he just seemed to go into panic mode. Bring in pitcher after pitcher after pitcher, five straight pitchers, new pitchers facing the five Cubbies batters, and it just blew up in his face. And uh, still, it was a great run, and I think they'll still be pretty good next year. But anyway, I was going to play 1962, but I'm replaying that with PC Replay Baseball, so I figured that overlap would not be fair uh, to the PC Replay um, Replay. So anyway, I loaded up 1965, which is a really underrated year. Uh, if you go to baseballreference.com, you'll see that 1965 was a year when uh, the top five, you know, they, they rank teams by SRS. Uh, I'm not sure what that rating is, but it's basically it takes into account uh, strength of opposition, uh, run differential, Pythagorean, all that sort of stuff. And the amazing thing is that the top five teams in the National League in 1965 were almost exactly the same. Uh, a couple of teams underperformed, a couple of teams slightly overperformed, but the uh, Dodgers, Giants, Cardinals, Reds, and Pirates were all like right there. And, uh, and then the, the Minnesota Twins, of course, in 1965 with the collapse of the Yankees, uh, were uh, the uh, definitely the class of the league. Uh, that's a really interesting team, and I've never replayed it. I've never replayed 1965 in any of the dozens of games I've 
used on the computers. So I figured I'd go for that. The Giants have a very good team that year, so why not? So uh, anyway, this is Inside Pitch Baseball. This is the opening game screen. When you start it, there's this blaring music, which you uh, unfortunately can't turn off, but it does turn itself off once you get to the, uh, the main screen. Uh, you kind of have no uh, choice in that. And uh, as you see here, um, uh, with help, you can see the rules and the PC game rules, which are pretty much the same. You can view a great instructional video of about an hour long from D I'm sorry, DMO 1964 on YouTube. The data file utilities, uh, you know, it's a little limited. You can change the ratings on the cards, but I, I wouldn't recommend you do that because uh, both Chris Davis and Bill Salm have uh, a very sophisticated way of coming up with those numbers and where they're placed. You can add team logos. That's about it. Uh, release players, sign players, you can create a duplicate of the data file. Uh, you can add ballparks and you can add player pictures, but um, I find that adding the ballparks and the uh, player uh, pictures are a real pain in the, in, in the backside. Uh, if you don't do it right, they're going to be squeezed or flattened and it'll just look kind of dumb. But adding the team logos are very easy. You just find a logo from uh, the uh, website. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Sportslogos.com, I think, or .org. Pick a logo, resize it to about 70 by 70, and, uh, and you're good to go on that. So that's pretty easy. Here you can view uh, statistics, league leaders, etc., replay versus actual, the standings, the schedules. Uh, one downside for inside pitch baseball uh, versus just about every other uh, current computer baseball sim is that it has a rather shallow stat package. Uh, that would be one of my major problems with the game. Uh, it's not obviously it's not a deal breaker. Uh, you certainly have enough to look at, but compared to just about any other uh, computer sim right now, such as Action PC or certainly Out of the Park, uh, is rather limited. So what we're going to do here, I just started a 1965 replay. So here you can either create a whole new game, out of schedule, load a game that you've saved, which is a huge advantage here, something that you do not get from any of Dave Koch's games, uh, or Coke, I'm sorry, it's Dave Koch. Uh, you can't save any action PC games. Uh, you can, um, uh, with um, action PC golf, of course, but the other games, football, hockey, basketball, and baseball, you can't save a game. Uh, that's a downside. But here you can. Uh, but in this case, we're going to go to the daily 1965 schedule. Here, again, you can play only an in individual team's games in the schedule. You can play all the games, just the National League, American League, or Interleague games. Of course, in 1965, thank God, there was no Interleague games, and there was no DH, uh, and there was no uh, ridiculous wildcard playoffs. Um, but as a San Francisco Giants fan, I guess I shouldn't complain about that. So we click on all games, and we go to the 1965 data file, and up comes the calendar for April. I'm still on day one which is April 12th. I've played every game so far uh, on that day, and I'm saving the San Francisco Giants at the Pittsburgh Pirates for this replay. And, uh, by the way, that's my daughter in the background. Um, uh, and the first thing you have to do is you want to use add played lineups. Of course you do. You want to use use roster players only. Well, that's up to you. Um, I don't. Because the problem with that is that often the as-played lineups will be incomplete and you'll have to add players of your own uh, because the rosters are configured uh, in a way that sometimes, uh, for example, a player that may have uh, started with the Pirates that are, that's traded in like May and June, they're not going to be on the Pirates. So if you hit ask played lineups and use roster players only, 
they won't be there. So I uncheck that, and here, of course, you see the logos that I've added. It's Juan Marichal against Bob Veal. We're going to have a lot of Ks in this game, I guess. Then you click Game Options, and it says here, Forbes Field, of course. No, no record for either team. Strategy shut down. Uh, the thing is, the game recommends strategy as you go along, and I always follow it, at least up to this point, because I'm still a newbie with the game. Uh, do you want to shut that down when, as it says here, the score differential plus the inning being played is greater than 10? So, for example, if the team has an eight-run lead in the fourth inning, uh, there will be no strategy recommendation. Sounds, I'm definitely turning that off. The sounds in the game, I think, are extremely annoying. Uh, dice animation, of course. Uh, you'll see it roll. If not, you don't like that, it'll just pop up 6-4 or whatever the dice are. Injuries, I leave that on, even though uh, we're playing uh, as played rosters. It just makes it a little more interesting for me. Pitcher auto pull, I turn that off. Uh, that's a game where the, the I, uh, Inside Pitch Baseball will not allow you to keep a pitcher in a game that is either tired or he's used up his pull number, which I'll explain in just a second. Rare plays, yes. Use roster players. I already explained that. That's a no. And then just keep the screen resolution uh, there. Use default because if you hit use preferred resolution for some weird reason, it's going to go into 640 by 480 mode. And then you'll have to reboot your computer. Okay, here are the starters. Again, it's Juan Marichal against Bob Veal. The lineups. Uh, the lineups. Let me uh, get back to that. Uh, that's a little bit off the screen. I'm sorry. Let me move that. There you go. There's the lineups for now. Okay, uh, again... It propagates the home lineup, I'm sorry, for the visiting lineup for the Giants. And then you click home lineup. The thing is, again, if you uh, click on roster players only, some of these will, uh, or one or two of them, will occasionally be blank. And you'll have to fill it in. And the player who is not in the lineup won't be here either. So it's better to leave roster players only off uh, if you want to use the actual lineups. We go to Pittsburgh. That's their lineup, and we go to the game. Okay, let me do that. Let me adjust this so, so we don't. And you know what? Okay, I'm sorry about that. We're back. I had to resize the screen, as you could tell. Okay, here is the game screen. We got the lineups. Who's batting? If you click on the name here, you'll have the actual season stats. That's for Harvey Keen. Bob Veal. His stats. This is the uh, text box telling you what's happening. Here's the top of the first. That information, of course. You have the uh, defensive positions here. Base runners here, if any. This is the strategy recommendation box. Pitcher card, hitter card, ballpark card. Now, uh, that's another thing that's a rather limited in this game. The uh, ballpark factors are only limited to strikeouts, walks, and home runs. And 1965 Forbes Field, you can see each one of these things takes a dip. But there doesn't seem to be... Uh, ballpark factors for doubles, triples, or foul territory, which is a flaw. Um, okay, so what we do is, uh, as everyone has said, uh, and by everyone, I'm talking about the fans of the game and ID Jester and DMO64, the really wonderful thing about this is that uh, there is no separation in the impact of the play between pitcher and batter. You always start out with the pitcher card, Bob Veal, Harvey Keen is the hitter, uh, and you roll on the pitcher card, then you go to Harvey Keen's card 95% uh, of the time. There are exceptions, which I'm sure we'll come up with. Uh, just look at the card here. 
Veal is a left-handed hitter. I'm sorry. I, he's probably a left-handed hitter. No, actually, he's a switch hitter. He's a left-handed pitcher. That's his injury rating, which means he did not get injured that particular year. He does not hit batters. He made 37 starts. Uh, his field, his range rating, and we'll get into that in just a second, is here. Uh, these, this is the matrix, as they call it. This is uh, tends toward his giving up home runs to lefties and righties. Obviously, he doesn't give up home runs much to lefties at all. This is singles and doubles, wild pitch, pass ball, stolen base, double play rating. He doesn't really pick off many uh, runners, even though he's a left-hander. And uh, let's go to the, uh, uh, the field first. The range ratings are here. Five is Hall of Fame defense. One is Ron Swoboda defense. In the case of the uh, 1965 Pirates, Clemente's a four. No surprise there. Verdon and Stargell are below average. In the infield, Gene Alley is great. Clendenin is very good. Schofield is average with a three. Bailey is a disaster at third. Pagliaroni behind the plate is a four. And uh, that's his uh, uh, pass ball rating here, 4-4. Four, four. Veal is below average in range. The second number in paren, that's his error rating. So Stargell uh, make, it does not have good hands in left field. So 11 would be, uh, the lower the number is better here. Because what you do when uh, you're testing a, a fielder for whether he's committing an error or not, it's a, a 1-20 to 20 dice roll. So if Stargell is highlighted as a possible error, 11, 1 to 11, he does commit an error. 12 to 20, he doesn't. So he's got a 55% chance of committing an error. Verdon's a 7. Clemente's a 9. That's surprisingly high. Uh, the number here after the error rating for outfielders is the arm rating. Of course, Clemente has an excellent arm, minus 2. Verdon is average. Stargell has a pretty good arm. Infield, same thing. Bailey is a real disaster. Not only does he have a low error rating, I mean a low range rating, but he has stone hands. And so does Clendenin, and so does Alley, surprisingly. The number after the uh, shortstop and second baseman, those are pivot ratings uh, for possible double plays. Pagliaroni, of course, that's a catcher's arm rating. He uh, has a weak arm, plus two. Now, in the uh, the hitter cards, again, Keen, he's injury prone with the 1964, 1964, 1965 Giants. He can play left, first, and right. This is his matrix. Uh, this is his, capa his capacity. His potential for strikeouts, walks, and home runs. The guy is a walk maniac here, you can tell, and has no power. But hardly ever strikes out, and these are other ratings. Running, bunning, sacrifice, stolen bases. Double plays, sack flies, and does he get hit by pitches? Okay, we're just going to go forward. Uh, I am not going to detail the uh, the instructions of the game. If you want to see that, I highly recommend uh, going to uh, ID Jester or DMO 1964's channels. Again, I will link to those. So, here we go. Leading off for the San Francisco Giants. It's right-handed hitter, left fielder, Harvey Keane. And we roll to 5-4. So again, the red die is here. The white die is here. The blue is a 1-20 to roll, and sometimes it comes into play, sometimes it doesn't. But in this case, we go 5-4, and Harvey Keene is a right-handed batter. You see the little slashes to the right of the slash. It says W+. Plus. That means you add uh, 10 points to Keene's already amazing walk rating. And again, which one do you look at? You look at the left-handed pitcher column, because Veal's a left-handed pitcher. So that will be a 27. That's an automatic walk. Keen is on. So you click it. He's now on first base. And here comes Hal Lanier, who is a terrible hitter his whole career. Wasn't that great in the field either, and wasn't a very good manager. Uh, and here you see something pops up in red. 
So uh, the computer manager is recommending a sacrifice. So we'll do that. We'll click on sac. Go back to veal. 6-5. That's a strikeout. Plus, of course, Bob Veal was probably second to Sandy Koufax as a strikeout pitcher in the 1960s. And Lanier does not strike out because he was sacrificing. Otherwise, that would have been a K. And we look over here. Again, the computer tells us what happened. He tried to sacrifice. It was a good bunt. And so we hit Lanier's bunt rating here. And it says here how Lanier Keen walked, Lanier sacrificed bunt, Lanier outed first. And here's Willie Mays. Okay, runner on second base for the Giants, one down. Mays. Okay, now we see error question mark. We could have an error. We roll on Mays' card to see where it was hit. 5-4. It's hit to third. Uh-oh! Hit to Bailey! He boots it! And it's a one-base error, so we have runners at the corners. See, right off the bat, Bob Bailey's stone hands bites the Pittsburgh Pirates. Okay, and here's Jim Ray Hart. Had an awesome 1965. Of course, Willie Mays was the National League MVP for 1965. It says James Hart. That's ridiculous. Okay, um, first and third, top of the first. Strikeout pitcher Bob Veal will leave the infield back. Uh, actually, let's see. Mays is fast at first. Yeah, so we won't play it even halfway. Let's just try to get Jim Ray Hart to uh, whiff. Here's the pitch. 1-3. Uh-oh, could be another error. And that's hit two. That's hit to uh, Schofield at short. What happens? No error. So now we see, is base runner on third going to try to score? Yes, because the infield was deep. Will the fence try for the out at home or the double play? We're going for the double play. Of course, this is another thing that should be uh, fixed. It says, will the defense try for the out at home or second to first double play? What does that mean? Yes, okay. We I think we know it means they're going to try for the out at home. So we're going to click no. But that needs to be uh, really rewritten. Okay, do we get a double play? We don't. Keen scores. Mays to second. Giants are on the board. one nothing. Okay, here's William McCovey. Lefty against lefty. Two outs. 6-1. What do we have here? We don't know. But we go here. Left-handed batter. And it's 17 Okay, this could be a long bomb. If the next blue roll is 1-17, to 17, it's a home run. Oh, it's not. Okay. I don't know if I did that correctly. But anyway, McCovey instead hits it deep to right field. And then it asks you, uh, do we need to make any adjustments? They already listed Mays as a unearned run potentially so the answer is no okay we go to the bottom of the second Giants leading one to nothing and here is the Giants in the field McCovey at first Lanier at second Hart at third Pagan the shortstop in the outfield Keen Mays and Alou that's uh, Jesus Alou his brother Philippe is already with the Milwaukee Braves behind the plate Tom Haller and on the mound Juan Marichal and facing Marischal, bottom of the first, will be Bill Burden. And that's 6-1. And that is not a K. Bill Burden, you can see here, does not strike out much. So we go to his card. It's a 2-4. And he flies out to a Lou in right field, one down. Here's Dick Schofield, a Pittsburgh shortstop, switch hitter, hitting from the left side against Marischal. 6-1. He does not strike out. We go to his card. 6-6. Double the right field. 
Okay, here's Clemente. Righty against righty. Pirates trying to tie it up. 1-4. Clemente does not strike out. 1-1. One, one. Ground ball. The third base. And Dick Schofield advances. We 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 can look at this crap, but the uh, <laughs> sorry when it's green, you know what the what it is. So I don't even look at this anymore. You just look here. If it's green, they go. If it's red, they don't. If it's a yellow, then you do have to check. So Schofield advances to third with two down. Here's Willie Stargell. Lefty against righty. Stargell. 5-5. Five, five. He's a lefty, so that's a nothing on this side of the slash. We go to Stargell's card. 3-6. Ground ball to shortstop, and Marischal is out of it. We go to the top of the second. For the Giants, Alou, Haller, and Pagan. Actually, I didn't do the defense for Pittsburgh. Let's do that. Clendenin at first, Alley at second. Bailey at third, Schofield the shortstop, and the outfield, Stargell, Verdon, and Clemente, Pagliaroni behind the plate. Veal on the mound, here's Jesus Alou. Right-handed hitter playing right field. And that's a 4-5 up, oh, wild pitch. Well, there's nobody on, so it's a foul ball. Let's do it again. 1-1. One, one. And that's a ground ball error, perhaps. Depends on who it's hit to. We're going to find out. Is that a ground ball? Yes, it is. Okay, that's going to be with Clendenin. Uh-oh, he's got a bad, 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 bad error rating. He No, Buddy Luck's out. He gets a 16, higher than 13, no error. Here's Tom Haller, lefty against lefty. 6-4. He's gone. Two down. Okay, that's the uh, first strikeout of the game and of the year, of course, for Bob Veal. Here's Jose Pagan, 5-5. Five, five. Okay, anytime you see an at symbol, that's going to take you to the Forbes Field card, and here it is. So, range play at the park. Let's see who Pagan hits it to. 3-4. He hits it to Stargell in left. Stargell, a below average fielder out there. Does he make the play? He does not. Failed. So Pagan is on first with a base hit. And here's Marischal with two down. Okay, there's a potential error on a throw. Let's see who he goes. it goes to. 4-3. No error. Oh, and another error on Bob Bailey. Marischal hits a ground ball to Bailey, and Bailey throws it away. Oh, man, second error of the game on Bob Bailey. And it's now first and second with two down and the leadoff hitter coming up for the Giants, Harvey Keene. Keene walked his first time up and scored a run. 4-5. Is that a wild pitch? 7? It is. See, 7 here is between 1 and 11. Wild pitch. Runners advance. Okay, with two down. Field, of course, will be at normal depth. One, two. Uh-oh, we go to the ballpark guard. One, two. That's hit to left. It's a ten. A triple! Harvey Keene, the slow old guy, hits a triple in Forbes Field. Well, that's possible because you know what I mean, right? That damn thing was enormous. But I think that was just luck, because there is no uh, triple or double uh, ballpark factors in this game. But he clears the bases! Three to nothing, Giants! Okay, here's Bob Beal. Facing Hallinier with two down. That's a 6-6. Six, six. Lanier's a right-handed hitter, so that's a nothing on uh, Beal's card. We go to 3-6. And Helen Ayer flies out to left. No, we don't need to make any adjustments. Boy, Bob Bailey. Jesus. Okay, we go to the bottom of the second. Three nothing Giants. All right. Here's Bob Bailey up. Boo! 
He's hearing it from the crowd. 2-5. And he walks. Okay. Here's Don Clendenin. Right-handed hitting first baseman. Okay, 4-6. Uh-oh. Is that going to go? It's gone! Don Clendenin gives it a ride. And it's 3-2, to two, Giants. Holy moly. Okay, next batter is Gene Alley, the second baseman. He's been around forever. 2-2. Two, two. No, actually, he hasn't been. I'm thinking of some, I'm thinking of somebody else. Alley does not strike out. I'm thinking of Dick Grove, I guess. Um, anyway, 4-5. He flies out to right. One down. Here's Pagliaroni, the catcher. 1-1. One, one. Do we have a, an error on the throw? 2-5. No error. Okay, that was hit to Jim Ray Hart. And that was really lucky because Hart has terrible hands at third base. Worse than Bailey. But better range than Bailey. But no error. We got a lucky 19. Two down. And here's pitcher Bob Veal. And Veal is gone. We go to the top of the third. 3-2 San Francisco. And for the Giants, heart of the order, Mays, Hart, McCovey. Willie Mays. 5-2. Mays. We go to his guard. 2-4. He flies out to right field to Roberto Clemente. Here's James Hart, also known as Jim Ray Hart. 5-4. And he walks. Here's McCovey. Oh, they're going to try a pickoff. See, this thing popped up in red, so we're supposed to click on it. Why not? And... See, that's a nothing. See, he has a nothing pickoff rating there of 1 to 2. So that's nothing. Now the pitch to McCovey. 3 2. No. Stretch does not strike out. Instead, he lines out to first. Uh oh, is that going to be a double play? No, it's not. Good job. Getting back there by Jim Hart. Okay, Veal against Jesus Alou with two outs. It's a 5-3. He does not walk. Okay, Alou, 4-6. Single. Past the shortstop. And Jim Hart does not advance. First and second, here's Tom Haller. With two down. Top of the third. He does not walk. Haller doesn't walk much, especially against left-handers. 5-3. Get to first base, and that ends the inning. We go to the bottom of the third. Okay. For Pittsburgh, top of the order. Center fielder Bill Verdon. Facing the Dominican Dandy. And that's not a strikeout. 2-2. Two -two. And that's a base hit. Pass Lanier. Into right field. So Bill Verdon is on. Here's Schofield. 3-3. Three, three. Ballpark. Let's see what we get from Forbes Field. 2-2. Two, two. Let's hit back to the box. And let's see. What do we do there? I think he's out. I think we got a double play. Let's see. Again, let me check this because it's a little confusing. Okay, roll versus hitters GDP, which is a 2. Pitcher's GDP, which is a zero, and the pivot, which is Pagano, which is a zero. Okay, so we're dealing with the number two. If roll is less than or equal, then uh, then there's a DP, but that's five. If roll is greater, runner on first. Okay, and six batter at first. Okay, so burden is forced at second, no double play. There you go. Okay. Schofield's now on first on the force. With one down. Here's Clemente. 1-1. One, one. Possible error on a throw. 5-6. Let's hit the center field. 
That's a base hit. There's an error on Willie Mays on the throw. What? One base error. And we now have runners at second and third. With one down. So, as it says here, Clemente single to center. Willie Mays made a bad throw. Schofield to third, Clemente to second. Okay, bottom of the third. Here's Willie Stargell. And with all these right-handers coming up, we are going to walk Willie Stargell with one down. So we'll click on an empty space. And then we'll click on the walk. And we'll get the question. Yes, we do. Okay, we're walking Stargell. Okay, here's Bob Bailey. Infield's going to be halfway playing for the double play. Righty against righty, 2-1. Uh oh we got a range play. Let's see who it's hit to. 6-1. Hit to Begon the shortstop. He's a 3. He doesn't make the play! Clemente will score! Stargell stops at second. 4-3, Pittsburgh! Damn! Okay, here's Clendenin, who had a two-run home run his first time up. They're getting the Marischal today, 6-4. Here's a range play at the park with one down. 2-4. Another base hit! Pagan doesn't make it, and he's a four. And the runners hold. Bases loaded, one down. Here's Gene Alley, again. Halfway. That's a 2-2. Two -two. Alley does not strike out. Marischal is not getting that pitch past him. 2-5. It's a pop out to short. Ooh, nice play there. Okay. Here's Paglioni, 5-4. Okay, before we hit this, uh, which is a an out, and that's going to end the inning, um, Marischal has plenty of time left in terms of batters faced, but this second number, as you can see, is called his pull number, and that goes down every time there's a base runner, or a base hits, walk, runs, walks, I'm not sure the exact formula, but it's now at zero because they're beating them up. Uh, now you can either ignore that or not. I'm going to ignore that because it's only the bottom of the third. Uh, also, I find the first, uh, one of the major problems here is there's no pitcher fatigue system in this game, game to game. So if Marischal, for example, pitches nine innings today, uh, you can pitch him tomorrow if you weren't using the real lineups. There's no penalty in order to do that. Now, uh, people can figure out their own little system, but there's nothing built into the game, which, uh, again, I think is a real flaw. And also, a lot of these numbers, uh, I think, are too low. Uh, I think pitchers tire uh, too easily in this game, based on whatever formula uh, the game is using. And the pull numbers are also too low, I think. Anyway, bases loaded, two outs, there's Paglioni. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, we already did that. 5-4. That's on the pitcher's card, not on the hitter's card. Uh-oh. HR question mark. Oh, no, is this going to be a grand slam? It is not. Where is it? Uh... It's yellow, so that's not good. Ooh, it's a 20. You know, I'm really not sure about this. Uh, home run question mark. Yeah, okay, C. Okay, that's a 13. Okay, we're at 5 for you. got home run question mark. This comes up. And it's yellow. Now, 13 is not in the range. So that's not a home run, correct? So we just 
roll uh, for Pagliaroni, which is a 2-5. And he grounds out to third. And adjustments to pitchers are No, we don't. Okay. Okay, we go to the top of the fourth. And the Giants coming up. It's the bottom of the order. Here's Jose Pagan. Righty against lefty. 4-5. Wild pitch. Well, there's nobody on, so it's a foul ball. Go back to Bob Beal. 1-4. And that takes care of Pagan. He strikes out. His Marischal. He's going to hit. 6-1. And again, we go here. Marshall's card. That's 5-3. And that's a base hit. 4-1 Marshall. Pass the shortstop. And with Harvey Keen up, we're going to do a hit and run. Hit and run cannot be attempted. Okay. Why are you recommending it? And it's a one down Marshall on first 4-3. That would be a single if Veal was tired. If this was red. But it's not. So we go to Keen's card. 5-5. Five, five. Base hit to left. Marischal does not advance. First and second. One down. Here's Hal Lanier. Why is Hal Lanier batting second? That's what I want to know. And Veal does not strike him out. Lanier. We get a double. Oh my god. Hal Lanier doubles. And the Giants have tied the game. Does Keen score? Let's see. Three. Keen is a four. That's in the middle. Lead runner thrown out. But if the trailing runner is BR, which is a three, is greater or equal to the roll, then he advances on the throw. Okay, so that means Harvey Keen... is thrown out at the plate and Hal Lanier advances to third on the throw. Okay, but we're tied at four and with two outs here's Willie Mays. Lanier at third. 2-6. Range play. 5-5. Five, five. Okay, does Verdon make the play? He's only a two. He does not! And now Lanier scores! Five to four, Giants! Okay, here's Veal. You see, he's used up his pull number. Uh, he's allowed, through three and two-thirds innings, he's allowed seven hits and two walks and five runs, only three earned. So they're really whacking him around. But I'm leaving him in because he's leading off the bottom of the fourth. Okay, here's Jim Ray Hart. And they're going to try another pickoff, and that's a nothing. Okay, here's Hart. 4-1. And Hart strikes out to end the inning. Okay, we go to the bottom of the fourth. And they're hitting for Bob Beal. Yes, they are. So this is going to be our first substitution of the game. And they have a tricky system. You can do whatever you want, but I... As a newbie, this is what I've been doing. So we click on the scheduled hitter, which is Bob Veal. Up comes the roster screen. Remove that. Okay. And, of course, you can pick anybody you want. But they have a really nice feature here where uh, you click on... Here you see there's a range of... 1 to 90. Um, why is it 1 to 90? Why is it 1 to 100? I don't know. But uh, And then the uh, basically the computer will tell you who will hit. So you hit select PH and it says Jerry Lynch. 42. That's Jerry Lynch against a right-hander. Lynch, of course, is a left-handed hitter. And we go back to the game. Here's Jerry Lynch. Leading off, oops, sorry, leading off the fourth against Marischal, 2-1, range play. 
It's 5-2. Base hit to center. Oh, maybe not. No, Willie Mays makes the play. I'm sorry. Mays came in and took care of that. Here's Bill Verdon. Verdon one for two today. 4-3. And he strikes out. It's only the second K of the game for Marischal. Here's Schofield. 3-6. No strike out there. 5-6. Grounds out to first, and that's the inning, and now we have to pick a pitcher. And again, same thing. You can see the range is here. Click select reliever, and Wilbur Wood is coming in. Left-hander facing McCovey. So the Giants do have two left-handers coming up here on the top of the fifth. It's McCovey, Jesus Alou, and Tom Haller. And here's Wood. 6-1. And he gets stretch. One down. Here's Alou. Alou one for two today. That's a 4-2. Is that a walk? It is not. That's a 4-1. And Jesus Alou flies out to center field. Two down. Here's Tom Haller. Haller 0 for two today with a strikeout. Here's 6-1. Not a strikeout this time. We go to Haller's card. 5-1. Base hit. Pass the shortstop. One down. Here's Pagan. 5-4. Could be an error on a throw. 3-6. And that's a ground ball to short to, I'm sorry, to Bailey at third. Uh, no, no, no error this time. Oh, man. And that takes care of the Giants. <laughs> Sorry about that. Bob Bailey actually made the play. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Marichal still out there. Okay, it's the bottom of the fifth. Marichal is not anywhere near tired, but he does have that uh, loss of pull rating, pull points. But I don't care. Okay, it's the bottom of the fifth. Here's uh, Clemente, Stargell, and Bailey. Clemente, one for two with a run. Giants have taken back the lead, 5-4. And that is... That would be a single if this was... Uh, this 10 was down to zero, but it's not. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure what the effect the pull rating has. Uh, I should look that up. Then we go to Clemente's card. It's a 2-5, and he flies out to right field. One down. Here's Wilbur, Wilbur Stargell. It's 1-5. Could be an error on a ground ball. And that's hit two. We don't know. It's not hit to anybody. It's a base hit to center field. So Stargell is on. One out. Here's the... Immortal Bob Bailey, and they're calling for a hit and run here, so we'll do that. And Marischal with the pitch. 1-2. And it's a fly ball to left field. No advance. Here's Don Clendenin. 2-2 two two with a home run, a single, a run scored, and two ribbies. And Marischal gets him. Three down, top of the sixth. Wilbur Wood out there. Marischal will hit. And that's a ballpark card. Let's see what Forbes Field gives us. 1-5. It's a ground ball to first. Clendenin takes care of it. Harvey Keane, two for two today with a triple, a single, and a walk. 5-6. We go to Keene's card. It's 5-2. Grounds out back to the pitcher. Wilbur Wood, two down. Here's Hal Lanier. Lanier with an RBI double. And that could be an error. Let's see who it's hit to. Giants hope it's hit to third, and it is. And Bailey boots another one. His third error of the game. 
Bob Bailey. Holy moly. And here's Willie Mays with two outs. Hallen here at first. Oops, sorry. Okay, Mays up. 2-5. It could be a home run. It is! Willie goes deep. And that's it for Wilbur Wood. The Giants now lead 7 to 4. Okay, new pitcher for Pittsburgh will be. Let's see what the computer tells us. Tommy Sisk, the right hander. And then we're going to take. No, we're not taking Clendenin out. No, we're not. Okay, no double switch there. Here's Tommy Sisk facing Jim Ray Hart. Righty against righty. That is a ground ball to third, and that ends the sixth. No, I don't. Okay, Marischal, now with a three-run lead. And he's facing the bottom of the Pittsburgh order. Here's Gene Alley. Alley over two. And Marischal does not strike him out. And Alley flies out to Jesus Salou in right field. And here's Jim Pagliaroni, the catcher. Jim is over two. 4-3. Marischal does not strike him out. 3-1. Pagliaroni flies out to right. And here's Sisk. And we're going to the bench. And it will be Gene Fries. Fries, right-handed hitter against Juan Marischal. Here in the bottom of the sixth. 3-2. Marischal gets him. Top of the seventh, the new pitcher for Pittsburgh will be Don Schwal. And Schwal will face McCovey, Alou, and Haller. McCovey 0 for 3 today with a K. It's 4 1. Range play at the park. And McCovey hits this one. To Clendenin at first, he makes the play. One down. Here's a loop. Two six. Not a walk. A loop does not walk much. Five five. Base hit to left. A loop is on. And here's Tom Haller. Four six. Could be another error. Is that going to be hit to third? Three five. No, we don't know. It's hit to Alley. He boots it! Another Pittsburgh error! Fourth error of the game! All by infielders. Giants have runners on first and second. One down, here's o and here's uh, Jose Pagan. The shortstop. Schwal. Righty against righty. 4-6. Oh no, another error possibility. 4-5. Hit to Bailey at third. Does he do it again? Yes! Bailey boots it again. His fourth error of the game. <laughs> and the crowd is throwing stuff on the field. Oh no, there's a battery that hit Bob Bailey in the head. Here's one Marischal with bases loaded and one down. And let's see. Okay, we are hitting for Juan, and it will be Jim Davenport, and the infield is in. Davenport against Schwal. 2-5. We go to Davenport's card. Jimbo, 2-2. Two -two. Base hit! Haller scores! Pagan does not advance. Nine to four, Giants. Here's Schwal. And uh, he's going to pitch to Keene. First and second out, one out. Five one. Does not strike out Keene. Three one. Keene flies to left. Two down, here's Alanier. Five, six, and 
The near goes down. Bottom of the seventh. Now pitching for San Francisco. Frank Lindsay. Lindsay will face the top of the Pittsburgh order. Verdon, Schofield, and Clemente. Giants leading 9 to 4. 5 6. No wild pitch. Nobody on base. Foul ball. It's a 3-4. Go to Verdon's card. 5-3. Base hit. Verdon is on. Here's De Schofield. Schofield double and three times up. Scored a run. 3-4. 1-1. 13. And that's a fly ball. Almost a triple. Harvey Keene gets to it. Nice play by Keene. One down. Here's Clemente. Roberto, one for three with a run scored. Four, three. Three, three. That's a ground ball to third. Will they get a double play? They don't. Verdon advances. Two down. Here's Stargell. 5-2. Willie strikes out. We go to the 8th. New pitcher for Pittsburgh will be Joe Gibbon facing Willie Mays. And he walks Willie. Here's Jim Ray Hart. 6-5. Hart is hit by the pitch. Oh, man. First and second now, Giants with nobody out. Here's McCovey. Lefty against lefty. 2-1. Ballpark card. 3-5. Base hit to center. A scores. Hart stops at second. 10-4, Giants. And here's a lose. 3-1. Lou does not strike out. He rarely strikes out, and he rarely walks. And in this case, he hits it to Bailey. Did he get a double play? Towards the line. Will the defense try to for the force at third, or double play first to third? They're going for the double play. And let's see. Do they get it? Okay, grounder to third. Roll one time. Okay, towards the right, towards the line. If wait a minute, towards the line, if DP or force, it would go five to three. Right at third. Okay, we already know that. It's uh. Okay. What do we got here? We got a force at third. And yeah, no DP. Okay. Um, Hard is forced out. McCovey advances to second. Fielder's choice. Okay. One out. Here's Haller against Gibbon. Lefty against lefty. 6-3. Strikes out. Here's Pagan. 5-1. Is it a walk? It is not. Pagan never walks against left-handers for some reason. 6-4. Fly out. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. Ten to four Giants. Frank Lindsay's still out there. It'll be Bailey, Clendenin, and Alley. It's 3 3. We roll. Bailey. 2 3. And Bob Bailey lines out to Jose Pagan. One down. Here's Clendenin. 2 5. Don Clendenin strikes out. And here's Gene Alley. Lindsay's going to try to finish the inning, even though he's tired. 2-3. Uh, no, that's a range play. No, it's not. It's a four, Forbes Field play. 5-1. Base it to right. 
Paglaroni's on. And he's going to pitch to him. 6-5. Jim. 2-1. Pops out to third. And Lindsay will come out. Pinch hitting for Frank. Will be Jack Hyatt. Joe Gibbon will not pitch the ninth. Pitching the ninth for Pittsburgh will be Roy Face. And Pagliaroni's coming out. We're doing a double switch. Pagliaroni, and let's see, we're going to bring in hmm, Ozzy Virgil. Ozzy will bat ninth. Roy Face will bat eighth. And yes, we want a double switch. Okay, whatever. Okay, Roy Face on there, on the mound now for the Pirates. Here's Jack Hyatt for the Giants. 4 2. Hyatt strikes out. Here's Harvey Keene. Keene 2 4 today. 6 2. Keene does not strike out. 6 5. He grounds out to, yes, the immortal Bob Bailey at third. And here is Alan Ear. 4-5. He does not strike out. 4-1. Single to center. Here comes Willie Mays. Mays 2-4 with a home run, a walk, two runs scored, and three ribbies. 5-1. Mays walks. Here's Jim Ray Hart. Hart has not participated in the carousel. He's 0 for 3 with a walk, a K, and a ribby. 1 5. Forbes Field card. 5 3. And Jim Ray Hart flies to Stargill and left. Pitching for San Francisco in the bottom of the ninth will be Bill Henry. And Henry will face Virgil, Burden, and Schofield. Henry, 6-2, range play, 2-4, grounds back to the box, and Bill Henry makes the play, one down, here's Verdon, Verdon 2-4 with a strikeout, 2-4, we don't know what that is, okay, 5-6, Base hit for Verdon, his third hit of the game. And here is Dick Schofield. Schofield, one for four with a double and a run scored. One six. Schofield hit by the pitch? No. Two five. Lines to first. Is this going to be a double play to end the game? Yes! That's the game! The Giants win! Okay, and what happens here, and yes, there's my daughter, uh, the game immediately goes to a post-game wrap-up. Giants, of course, won the game 10 runs, 13 hits, 1 error. Pirates, 4 runs, 10 hits, 5 errors, all in the infield, 4 of them by Bob Bailey. Marischal, the winner, Veal, the loser. Mays at a home run for San Francisco. Clendenin for the Pirates. We give you a play-by-play. The whole game. And then the game stats. Remove that. Okay. For the Giants, how many of the Giants runs were earned? Only five. Five of the ten were earned. Anyway, Marischal the winner. There's his stats. Not, not really too sharp. Seven hits allowed, four runs all earned. Walk two, struck out four, allowed one home run. Lindsay and Andrew came in for cleanup. Veal the loser. Uh, he didn't pitch very well at all. Four runs, I'm sorry, four innings, seven hits, five runs, three earned, two walks, three Ks, one wild pitch. And the Pittsburgh Pirates actually had six pitchers in the game. Uh, and there you see the basic accounting. Uh, one problem with this game is that there are really no defensive stats, except for these range numbers here.
you know, who cares? There's no putouts, assists, but there are errors, double plays turned, uh, range factor. Uh, yeah, there's n none of the sort of 21st century sabermetric formulas are part of this game. War, OPS, uh, none of that. So that, that that's a uh, limitation. But overall, I think you see that uh, this is a pretty special game. It's very involving. Uh, and I highly recommend it. And we're going to save the stats. And then we go to the main menu. And this game has a lot of really annoying uh, sounds and pieces of music that come out of nowhere. Of course, you can turn that off. And thanks for watching. Uh, this is uh, Carl Brego. I'm going to be back. Uh, Inside, Inside Sports Games also has a great football game. And I want to do a video on that soon. I'm replaying the 1967 season. And I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.